Hey guys, Alex again. We just wanted to film a quick update video because we've made a couple little tweaks to our MPT thread milling process as well as our thread milling calculator. So I wanted to be sure to update you on those because it makes it easier to model your MPT holes and can also solve a few problems if you're having problems getting your MPT threads to actually work. So we had a piece of job shop work that we did recently and it really kicked our butts. We couldn't figure out why our MPT thread milling just wasn't working. Our problem turned out to be the fitting that the customer wanted to use. And that's because there are sort of three variations of fittings we ran into. First, you have your nominal fitting. This means that your overall length of thread here is gonna be the same as it is in your machinery's handbook. This is ideal, especially since our thread mill calculator used to calculate our whole values based on our nominal data from the machinery's handbook. Where this becomes problematic is when fittings don't match that nominal value. So we have two other kinds of fittings, one that I'm calling a cutoff fitting, which is where the manufacturer just shortens our fitting a little bit to fit in shorter holes by cutting the bottom of the threads off and just making it a shorter fitting. This isn't as much of a problem because a cutoff fitting will fit in a nominal hole. Where we had our problem is with what I'm calling the shortened fitting. And this is because instead of just cutting off the bottom of the threads, some shorter fittings are actually missing the top portion of their threads. So this bottom diameter here is actually equal to the bottom diameter of our nominal thread but the top diameter is what's different. We'll move over to Fusion and I'll show you why this is a problem. So here I have a cutaway modeled of our nominal size MPT hole, as well as a nominal size MPT fitting. So you can see if we take our nominal fitting and we move it into the hole, it fills perfectly. You can't see any gaps. There's no red visible. So let's switch that out for our cutoff size fitting. What you can see is exactly the same size and shape. It's just a little bit shorter. Now, if we move that down into our hole, you can see it looks like it fits about the same, other than we have this gap down here, which isn't really a problem. There's no red around our actual fitting, and it should be a snug fit. So no problem there. The problem arises in this case if we switch to our shortened fitting. You can see it's exactly the same length as our cutoff fitting, but our cutoff fitting sort of overshadows it because it's a little bit larger. So if we move our shortened fitting down into the hole, we'll look at it straight on and you can see we get a little bit of red on the edges, which means that our fitting is too small. And that's gonna result in a really loose thread, meaning that not only is our fitting not gonna be secure in the hole, but it's also gonna result in a really bad seal. And that is definitely not what we're looking for with a pipe fitting. Now let's take a look at the thread mill calculator and see what's changed from the last revision. Just a heads up, the new revision is revision eight. So be sure to download that below if you have not done that yet. You can see not a whole lot is changed. So all of our values here are exactly the same as they were before. The one thing I do want to note has changed is in the last video, I said if you want a hole that is not as deep as the nominal value, you can set that to your hole depth. So for example, if I wanted just a quarter inch deep hole and not the full 0.3924, I could do that. In this case, this number always needs to be the same as your machinery's handbook value. The one other change we made is you can see this spot here where the hole depth used to be is now a taper angle. This is important because it makes modeling the holes so much easier and also allows us to adjust for which type of fitting we're using. Let's jump back into Fusion and we can model a few holes. So let's go ahead and start off by modeling our nominal sized hole. So we're just gonna go ahead and draw a circle here. And if you remember in the last revision, what we had to do is draw two circles and loft them to each other. Now, all we need to do is draw one single circle. So in this case, we drew our top hole, D for dimension, so it's 0.3583. And we can go ahead and stop our sketch. That's all we have to do. So now that we have our circle made, we're gonna press E for extrude. We can extrude our hole and our distance is going to be equal to, in this case, our nominal value. So that is 0.3924. The thing is, this just created a straight walled hole but we can add a taper angle 
and that will create the correct taper for our MPT threads. Now, this taper angle here in Fusion is on center. So the given on center taper angle for an MPT thread is one degree and 47 minutes, which is equal to 1.78333 repeating degrees. Go ahead and click enter. And you can see if we measure this bottom hole dimension right here, this should be pretty much the same as the value we have in the thread mill calculator. And if you notice, it's not because I just made a mistake. So you can see it's tapering the wrong direction. So sometimes you need to make that taper angle negative. Now, if we measure it, we should get 0.3339 or very close. You can see we get 0.334, so we'll increase that. 0.3339, perfect. So there's our nominal sized hole. Now if we wanted to do a hole that would perfectly fit our cutoff size fitting, remember our cutoff size fitting would fit in here, but say you don't have that much depth, and say we needed to make just a quarter inch hole, we can do the same process. We'll draw a circle with the correct diameter. And then we can extrude it. And the beauty of this method is we can set our distance to whatever we want it to be. It doesn't have to be the nominal value as long as our taper angle remains correct. And those holes now have the same taper, but a different bottom hole diameter and a different depth. The process for making a shortened fitting is almost exactly the same. The difference is we're actually gonna start with our bottom hole diameter. So we'll go ahead and offset a plane here and we'll do the same we did before, so a quarter inch. And then we'll create a sketch on that plane and we're gonna make another circle, but this time it's gonna be equal to our bottom hole diameter. And that's all we have to do. So now we can go ahead and extrude that just like we did before. apply the same taper angle. And make sure that we're going in the right direction, which in this case, it's positive. Go ahead and click OK. And just like that, we have three different holes for the three different kinds of fittings. So this replaces the two circles and lofting method we discussed in the last video. Everything else is still accurate. So once you have your hole modeled, you can go ahead and refer back to the old video where the thread milling process is exactly the same. We've also had a couple people ask us about the NPT hole feature in Fusion. And we've noticed that when you use the hole tool to create an NPT hole, it doesn't work well with our thread mill calculator. So it's great for modeling purposes, but if you're actually planning on camming up a thread mill operation, in Fusion, it's best to use this modeling method instead of the whole tool. I went ahead and found three different fittings, one of each type, and then created this sample file, which is available for download on our site below. I thread milled these three holes with the appropriate lengths for each fitting, and this should allow you to see the difference that it actually makes with the different types of fittings and hole sizes. Here I have the three different kinds of fittings screwed into the appropriate holes that we just thread milled. So we're gonna take those out and we'll try each fitting in each hole so that you can see the effects that a different hole may have on a different fitting. Starting off with the nominal fitting, you can see that it fits right into the nominal hole as it should, no problem. Moving that over to the cutoff hole, and you may not actually be able to see a difference here, but that fitting isn't going to thread in quite as far as it did in the nominal hole. And that's because the thread length on the nominal fitting is actually longer than the hole itself. So your fitting may thread easier, it may also bottom out, and it may feel like you're getting a good seal, but remember since that fitting can't screw all the way down into that hole, it may not be as good a seal as it seems. And if we move over to the shortened length hole, you can see I can't comfortably thread this very far at all. And that's just because that hole is shifted up and that top diameter is so much smaller than our other two fitting holes. Moving on to the cutoff size fitting, you can see it fits in both the nominal and cutoff size holes about the same. 
And this is just as it should, because remember, both those holes have the same top diameter and the same taper angle. The nominal hole is just a little bit longer, which isn't a problem for this fitting. The problem does arise if we try and put that fitting into our shortened size hole. The cutoff fitting is actually harder to thread than the nominal fitting because its lower diameter is larger than that of the nominal fitting. So we have the same problem we had before, but even more compounded. And I can only thread this about half a turn. Moving right along, we can take our shortened fitting and we'll go ahead and try and thread that into the nominal hole. And you can see it threads pretty easily and it does thread, but once we get it all the way down, there's a lot of wiggle. And this is a problem, there's so much play in this that there's just going to be no seal whatsoever. We have the same problem with our cutoff size hole, but if we move that to the shortened hole, which is the appropriate depth for this fitting, it fits great. So while different types of fittings may fit in a hole that isn't the proper type of hole, it's always good to remember that just because it fits doesn't mean it's going to give you the kind of seal that you want. So it's always important to check and see what fitting you're going to be using for each job to try and match that hole that you're thread milling as perfectly as you can. That's all I've got for today. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you here next time here on NYC CNC.